Good morning. Well, we had that snow last night. It's going to melt here real quick because it's in the mid-30s. It's warming up. going to be a nice day, it looks like. I took that uh, insulation blower and the trailer back. Got all that stuff done this morning. i got to help Dad do some measuring. So we are going to put an addition on this barn and we're trying to get the dirt work done, get it graded off about where it needs to be. Talked about this a little bit before, but the floor height is not going to match. We're actually going to be two foot lower here. So dad's setting the laser up at the thing over there by the dike. And we're going to take some measurements and try and figure out where exactly stuff's got to be and what we've got to do for elevation. He's going to put some cones about where the corners are going to be. We're going to do some measuring. So those cones are roughly where the edge of the building is going to be, the corners. We're going to have a big doorway on this east side here, facing the driveway. So I've got to figure out where exactly we want that. And then we've got to look at our elevations and see how much fill we're going to have down here and whether or not we're good down there. We'll see. That's what our laser's for. I'm at eight. Seven, eight. Oh, eight foot even. So you still got five inches of fill here. Which I don't want too much less than that. No, I was thinking you needed four inches minimum, so you're right right there. So I, I don't want to tear this apart until I Right, you don't want to undercut it. So our floor height there is five one. Well, which I don't know if that is. Cause right, that's down, but inside the barn. And we want to be, we want our floor to be two foot lower. We're still going to have four or five inches of fill here. There's a spot out here where Dad measured where he's basically not taking anything off. That we'll have to have eight inches of fill because we're going to have six inch, or it's now we haven't decided yet, six or eight inch concrete. So right here, we're going to need eight inches of fill, and then the concrete to get to the floor height to be two foot lower than there. What do we got down here, Dad? He's right in the center. Eight seven. So that's a foot of fill. Yeah. Okay. So he's nine three there, which is. We gotta be, what's our, our stone height supposed to be? Seven, seven? Yeah. Or seven, five? Six inch floor, or are we gonna go thicker? Figure six. So that'd be seven, seven. So you're 18 inches of fill right there. And we haven't taken hardly anything off of there. So that's why we're not making the floor heights the same. Cause if we went another two, another two foot on top of there to get the floor heights level, you'd have and a half almost four feet of fill on this end without having stripped hardly anything off of it so it's just not practical there's no way that's going to work nine seven yeah it's worse than this corner so okay so you want to set some stakes some grade stakes oh you got to make some stakes all right so what i thought was i'd stake out like where the driveway or the doorway's going to be yep and just stay in 15 feet on the edges or something. Well, the guy, the thing says five foot in. Oh, okay. Right, but I mean, we're gonna have to dig around for the footer and stuff, and you don't want to waste your stone and bury it, so right. we can just fill in the center here a little bit. Well, we're concerned about the goo, I guess. Well, we don't have to do it now. Came down to my garage to clean up a few things. I got the uh, Circuit breakers installed for my ceiling lights, so that's all hooked up. And I uh, put a couple of plugs in the ceiling there where the garage door openers are going to go. I put a temporary cover over my access hole there. Just put the drywall cutout back up there with some strapping to hold it. I'm going to put some trim pieces around there, but we'll get to that. Uh, swept up the floor, cleaned up, get all my stuff out of the way. So whenever they show up again, so I keep working on the house, it's a little cleaner and nicer in here. Did I show you guys this? Last week they came and set some cabinets. Uh, yeah, very nice. I like them a lot. Nice. 
So they got all the bathrooms and the laundry room done. Uh, they brought some stuff in for the kitchen, but did not actually install all of the, any of those yet. Um, they've got our, our, our lower cabinets are going to be stained. They're wood stained, so they didn't bring any of those yet. We're waiting on them, but yeah, looks good. All right, it is uh, about lunchtime, so I'm going to go eat. But when we get back, I bought a new thermostat. We're going to fix that. And I've been thinking about trying to decide whether or not we need two thermostats in here because we, we have two heaters. They're separate systems, and we've got them on separate thermostats at the moment. But if I just ran the thermostat wire from that one over here and tied it into one thermostat that should control both of them, right? Any reason I can't do that? Well, by the time you guys are watching this, well, I've already decided whether I'm going to do that or not. So uh, it doesn't really matter what you think, but yeah. All right. So we had a um, thermostat die on us and we tried replacing the batteries. That didn't work. Notice there was some corrosion on stuff. And so we tried cleaning it up, but that didn't help either. So I ended up taking the board out and tried cleaning it. It didn't work, but there was a bunch of corrosion all up in here. And these tabs and junk basically one of the batteries was leaking i think so um for some reason when we installed these two heaters we put two thermostats in one on each side and that's fine it worked but i'm thinking that i can just take the wires off of this thermostat and tie them into the one for the other heater and run them in parallel and it'll control both heaters rather than uh, having them on their own thermostats. So we're gonna try that. So I'm taking the old one off here. I took these wires loose. There's only three wires um, and it's a, it's a common low voltage and then a high and a low fire and it's a dual stage heaters. And so it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We should be able to do this. I'm gonna take that off of there and then we'll have to pull some clips. And I think I can just run it from this heater over to the other one, type into the wires there, and then they come down to the thermostat. Well, I got the uh, thermostat wire off the wall and I'm stretching it along over to this other heater here. So I'm just zip tying it to the electrical conduit rather than stapling it to the, to the wood. So we'll get that over. It looks like it's gonna be just about the right length to get to our heater. Seems like that was too easy. I just cut the ends off and crimped new ones on with two wires in it and put them back on there. So I think we're good. I'm gonna go down and kick the uh, thermostat up a little hotter and see if they both turn on or not. Look, help. There's one. Green light's on over there too. Fan's on, hasn't fired yet. Yeah. Ah, check it out. Lights are on. Lights are on. Hey, kick it up about two or three more degrees till it says second stage or high fire. We'll see if the high fire works. Yep, it does. Awesome. Well, good. Now both of our heaters are working again. Now that my heater's done, I got some other stuff to work on. Dad has been working on some boards for my house, and he's making stair treads for me out of solid walnut, which is awesome. But I need to know what our stain options are and what they're going to look like. So I'm planing down this board that is just beautiful with uh, some heartwood and some sapwood on it so that I can get a feel for how the stains will react on uh, the different types of wood uh, so we can get that figured out. So I'm planing this one down so that we got something to do some samples on. I'll show you the treads and what we're working on um, in the other barn here in a minute. Here's our board. I'm just wiping it down with some paint thinner. Get all the dust off of it before I put some stain on there. I've got two stains right now that we're gonna try. Um, I might have to get some more stuff. This is just what Dad had on hand. We've got a Verithane light walnut and a Minwax special walnut. I don't think you're supposed to put stain on walnut. 
So there is a difference in the heartwood. This is just the finish, no stain. This is the Minwax and this is the Verithane. And you can't see any difference in those, in the actual walnut. Here a little bit, but. Now I think we're just gonna do a, a, a finish on it and not a stain. Subject of course to approval by my wife. So dad's got a pile here of, there's some walnut, there's some more walnut. These boards are my stair treads. And um, man, they're incredible. Full length or full width stair treads. But uh, what we've noticed when we're cutting some of this walnut, when dad was cutting some stuff for floorboards on the table saw is that it's really cracking um, when you start cutting. So they're under a tremendous amount of stress. And like, if you look at the end of this board, notice that it's the center of the tree, the center of grain there. And so um, what we're gonna do on them is actually rip them in half and then glue them back together, which should relieve all the internal stress so that hopefully they don't crack in the future. Um, and it'll still look like a single piece, but it'll be, it'll be two boards glued together, but yeah, from right next to each other, know what I mean? So they are a little thick yet. We've got to plane them down a little bit more, which is why some of the surface blemishes, like that scratch there. Um, it's not a big deal because we got to make another pass through the planer, but those will be gorgeous. And so we're going to, he's making, what he's doing now is planing some boards for floor actually, because the, um, the two landings are going to be, uh, walnut boards, but that'll be more like hardwood flooring boards. It'd be five inches wide instead of big wide ones like this. So anyway, that's what dad's working on. He's playing in some now. I'm going to go back out there and see what he needs help with. Whoa. There's another load of stone. Nice. Well, I'm not sure where I left off filming, but I came back in the garage here to look at my board and it's changed a lot. And I don't know how well you guys are gonna see this, but this was my one stain, this is another one, and then this is the clear, and the clear looks really splotchy, like it's soaked in or something, you know, and it just needs another coat, which we're gonna give it another coat, but you can clearly see the strip between where I put the two different stains, so the stains definitely did something. This one didn't change the Walnut, the dark walnut very much. It does have some darkness in the sapwood, but this one really kind of brought out some of that. I like that. I don't think my wife will like it, but I really like that. Now this, I don't care for as much. So interesting. I'm going to throw another coat of the finish on there and then we'll come back in the morning and see what it looks like. All right. Well, I got that on there. So we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Uh, I'm heading home. It's, it's almost six. I told my wife I'd be home early. It's not going to be early, but that's okay. Um, Thanks for watching today. Tomorrow, I might go out and do seed sale stuff, and I might not be around to make a video. We'll see. I'll just see how the day goes. If I'm here, I'll make a video. If I'm not, I probably won't. So thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And uh, 20000 by the end of the year. Can we do it? I'm going to have to get going. It's almost December. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you.